What's up, guys? <laughs> so, this is actually an update video. If you guys want to hang out in here, you can. You can hang out in here. I'm just, I'm going to update you guys oh, on what I've been up really to. Bad. Um, I, what? On my side when I go like this. Shade. Yeah, you look kind of scary. You might want to come around on this side where the, where the, 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 That was so mean. That the, was not well, the no, greatest no, intro. No, no, the exterior, the exterior light is going to hit your face different. So, okay, okay. it just hits different. It hits different. That's all I'm trying to say. She almost just tripped and fell with our baby. I get it. Say hi! Anyways, guys. So, I mean, feel free to, to take a seat in the room. You might have to clear that stuff off. But, so I took a couple days off to spend some time with my family. Um, and honestly, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be transparent here. I got my first, um, I got my first direct deposit ever from YouTube today. Um, this is the first time I've ever been paid in my YouTube career, so to speak. So it was pretty hype. I was pretty excited about it. Um, it felt like the past year didn't go in vain. It really feels like I've been doing content for way too long. Um, I did forget to set some stuff up properly. So that's honestly on me. Um, honestly, for an entire month, I forgot to do the final stages of the payment setup. So, and it's whatever, I still like making videos, but it's just nice to actually get paid for the time that I'm putting into it. But um, without further ado, um, let's throw this trash out. Woo! Without further ado, um, I wanna let you guys know what I've been working on. Um, so, I bought a bunch of toolkit stuff and supplies and a soldering iron, soldering iron. It seems like in UK, they call it soldering. Um, it seems like here in the U.S. it's soldering. I really don't care, but I bought a bunch of equipment, batteries, the whole nine yards, batteries with tabs for my Game Boys, the whole deal. Um, I've been taking apart uh, various uh, old consoles of mine and working on them. This is actually a limited edition uh, silver black SP. These are actually a little bit rarer than your typical SP. Uh, so I really like this one. I don't know why. It, it honestly looks kind of janky. It looks like somebody's bad modification. But at the same time, it's kind of cool how it has the contrast of the black and silver. But anyways, guys, anyways, guys, I'm just giving you guys an update, a short video update on like what I've been up to. So the past couple days, I've just been taking some time off to reflect, think about my time on YouTube, spend time with my family, um, spend time working on how we can make the bar better, which if you guys are new to the channel, I run a bar that's my full time gig. Uh, me and my family operate a bar here in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's Starlight on 22nd. It's a super cool cultural bar, but I'm not going to get into that because um, this channel is really based on my hobbies and my passions. Um, and that, for the most part, has really been Pokemon cards. Um, I do like Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but I focus on Pokemon a lot more. Um, and Nintendo consoles. More recently, I've gotten into collecting Nintendo consoles. I'm going to do a video follow-up on that as well. This is really, again, just an update video letting you guys know where I've been at. I have not ghosted the YouTube community. I've just been taking some time off. Um, I think my family needed it. I think my relationship needed it. I think that just it was nice for my mental health as well. And also, at the same time, it was detrimental to my mental health. And here's why. I'm about to explain to you guys what I've been doing in this time off. So, I, so my buddy brought by this uh, Nintendo Pokemon Gold game. I tried to play it. The battery would not uh, save. I just kept hitting new games. Um, so I was pretty much at a loss, even though uh, it was basically gifted to me for 20 bucks. I still consider that gifted because I know these can go for a lot more. Um, I, knew that with, I know that with a new battery soldered in there, these can go up to $100. Um, I know that with the box and everything, these can go up to 300. I know a nice box for Pokemon Gold goes up to 200, 240. So I know that these are very valuable, honestly, um, but it was scratched up when I got it and it didn't save. So it really wasn't worth as much. Um, now, luckily, this one was a super easy repair. I got in, I popped off this little back plate. You know, I got a little tool kit with this specific tool to get into this um little bolt there that little screw the little star bit screw um but uh basically i've just been i've just been straight up working on this game i have been working and i haven't left the seller a bad review 
because honestly, I don't care enough and I don't have the time to go on eBay and leave a bad review right now. I don't feel motivated to do, to do that. Um, this, for you guys that don't know what you're looking at right now, this is a Pokemon Game Boy Pokemon Yellow Edition, the special uh, Pikachu version. Um, and the box is actually in pretty good shape. I have a box protector, so it looks a little bit better than it actually is. And honestly, I've stuffed stuff inside, and I've had it in this protector, and I've been kind of molding it back into the box that it should have been. When I got it, it was a little bit mangled up. And honestly, it's looking really, really good. Um, right over here, you guys can see those little dent marts. I had to take off some dirt, and honestly, I ended up damaging the box a little bit by scratching off little black dots and so forth. But dirt really bothers me, and honestly, I still think the game looks better, even though it's slightly... Uh, has some dents right there. I still think the game overall looks a lot cleaner without having a bunch of splotches right here. So I think it looks really good. But you are looking at a um, Pokemon first print. So this is the first print of these games. By that, what I mean to say is um, it has a flap at the top and a flap at the bottom. So if a game is not a first print, it will have a diagonal cross. It's called a white fold, whatever. The terminology really doesn't make a difference to me. Uh, this is just to help other people that might be interested in getting into these as collectibles. Um, the white fold is not the first print. Thus, the first prints that have this flap at the top and a straight flap at the bottom, um, these typically will go for a lot more and usually are a lot more ragged, a lot more kind of brutalized, kind of destroyed, um, worn down. Uh, the, the, the cardboard just looks a little more crinkled. I don't know how to explain it, but it's very, very hard to find first print boxes in really good condition. And honestly, I won this listing for $100 for this first print box and then the game that came inside with the manual and everything. Um, so honestly, I was pretty happy with it overall. But um, I've been working on this Pokemon Yellow game all day. I spent all day yesterday, honestly, looking back, I should have just made a video on all the time that I spent on it, all the methods that I used. Um, I, I, whoo, uh, my wife reminded me of this and she's like, it's actually pretty funny how much time you spent on this. Um, so I, at about noon, at about midday, we had lunch. I sat down, I said I was going to put a new battery in this and that was going to be the end of it. It ended up being an ordeal to basically one in the morning. I spent 12 hours straight trying to repair this Game Boy game and it was absolutely detrimental to my mental health. I thought that I was taking a day off away from YouTube, away from work, away from anything to just relax, have some family time. And I got sucked into a whole nother thing. And I feel bad because my wife, my kid, you know, I didn't get to spend as much time with them because I was focused on trying to fix this stupid game all day. But anyways, I got it fixed, guys. It saves now. Um, I thought I got it right the first time, and then it just whited out, and then the, the Nintendo logo got all garbled up. It was just, it was a nightmare. Um, but let's see. First, I put in a battery that I already had. I put in a CR2025, um, which is a larger battery. So this game actually takes a CR. What I mean by that is, inside of the game cartridge you know what let's just let's just i'll just show you guys just bear with me oh okay bear with me let's get our kit here oh okay so let's get this i love this you can get this kit on amazon it's super cheap it's like 20 bucks or 25 dollars it honestly has everything you need to get into these kits um as far as this goes i don't really care about pumping up the market. I don't really care about whether you guys buy this stuff or not. I will be buying it heavily. I love this stuff. I've gotten super addicted to buying it. Um, and honestly, I just sold my first console recently. So I'm super excited about that. Um, shout out to Joshua Phillips. I sent out the Giovanni theme deck and the Blaine theme deck early this morning. So I hope you love that stuff. Um, but anyways, if we open this up, I'm going to open this guy. I'm going to open the. Actually, I don't want to open this one up because it's already repaired and I don't want to mess. I don't want to mess up anything. So let's. Here we go. I got another game from my childhood. This Harry Potter game right here. Why won't it focus in? Usually it's pretty good about. There we go. So I'm going to show you guys this as a frame of reference because uh, I really don't want to mess with my Pokemon games. They're finally all saving. I don't want to mess with them. 
Um, there are a lot of methods to this. I could have done this better, but I'm just for the point of showing you guys exactly what I did and why it was so frustrating yesterday. I'm gonna take this out. So when you take out this little screw, you need a little, you need a, it's a star bit. Um, if you order that kit on Amazon, it'll give you everything you need when you're opening up a cartridge like so. Um, and this one's clear. So you can clearly see that there's an Nintendo on the back. If you want to make sure that it's authentic and legitimate, you're going to want to see that. Um, basically it just, it just, it just slides. It just slides. Don't try and pry it. I made that mistake and almost broke this one. Um, don't try and do that. Just slide it back. When you slide it back, the casing will come off. And then boom, you can see. So this right here is a CR1616. So most Game Boy games use a CR16, but most Pokemon games use a CR2025. Now, here's why this is important. The first time that I worked on this Pokemon, this Pokemon Yellow game, I decided I would look up, is it okay to use a slightly larger battery in this um, in this older game that uses the smaller battery the CR1616 and uh, honestly the connection points to this the all of the soldering points the the S RAM which is right here which affects memory everything honestly on this one this is a great example this one looks super clean it looks really good um, but uh, basically this little battery right here when I, when I was replacing this I tried to put in a larger battery thinking, hey, this will last just, this will last even longer. And I did a community post. If you look at my community post, you can see that I put in a CR 2025 um, or 2525. I honestly can't even remember what it was called at this point. Um, but what happened was it was a super tight squeeze and it worked for a while. It worked for about an hour. I got an hour of gameplay out of it and then boom, it whited out, it crashed back to a new game, couldn't save tried saving it over and over and then realized it wasn't worth the anxiety and I was going to try and refit it. So I tried refitting it over and over again. And no matter what I did, that CR 2025, what is, what is it? It's 20, 25, 25. I, I gotta, now I'm just out of curiosity. I need to know 20, there's 2032, which if a game takes a 20, uh, 20, yes, 2025. If it takes a 2025, you might as well just put in a 2032 in. Uh, the 2032 is larger, thus will last longer. That does apply to these Game Boy games. But what I'm trying to say here is I tried to squeeze in a 2025 into this tight space here, and it just would not budge. It would not close. It would not work. So I ended up saying, okay, screw it. I'm going to Batteries Plus. There was only one Batteries Plus in Charlotte that was near me, and it was 10 miles away, and it was a 30-minute drive. So boom, there goes an hour of my day right there going to get the right battery. First, I lost an hour when I tried to jam the 2025 in and it just didn't work. Then, and as you guys know, I took a lazy method and I taped it. Now, since then, I've bought a soldering iron. I bought all the equipment, the solder. Um, I've got all that good stuff. I even ordered an even nicer setup, a nicer kit um, after I bought one here. I've spent at least $100 yesterday just buying stuff to fix these games and clean them and also clean my consoles because I'm also going through the process of opening every single console and cleaning it head to toe. So that way when I do end up selling some of these to make room for new additions, they will be super clean for the next person. A lot of these are pretty grimy on the inside. So I'm really glad I've gotten the, I've been the first person to actually clean them out. It's super fulfilling and it feels really nice to just clean a console thoroughly. Um, but anyways, and if you are going to do that, use isopropyl alcohol, use 99%. I have 91%. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, but I did notice my games didn't boot up immediately when I cleaned the contact pins by that. I'm talking about these right here. If they're corroded or showing, you know, a, a rust or oxidation or any of that, they're pretty much going to be gone. You know, if it's, Honestly, if it's not looking like this, it's probably not going to play that well. And even this one, um, the battery is dead and I'll have to replace the battery at some point. But I'm not as worried about doing that because it's Harry Potter and I'm really not interested in playing Harry Potter. Uh, but I do want to set that up in case my sister ever wants that game again and wants to play it again. Um, but okay, I'm getting off topic here. First thing I did was I went to Batteries Plus or I played it. That was an hour gone. Then I spent an hour going to Batteries Plus brought the battery back. Then I tried to reuse these tabs right here, which a lot of people will advise against that. 
that you can just buy the battery um, with the tabs already attached to it and just solder it back on. But I was trying to electric tape these back on just so I could get them running perfectly and play them again as soon as possible. Also, I like the idea of using electric tape and getting that to work because then if you want to replace the battery in the future, it's really easy. You just pop a new battery in there, you put a new little tiny strip of tape on there and you're good to go. But that was the case with gold. Gold, I got this done in like 20 minutes. It took me no time. It still saves perfectly. That was not the case with yellow. Yellow was an all day thing. And honestly, my father calls it the stupidity fee, the price you pay for not doing your due diligence and doing your research. Anyways, I didn't have all the tools I needed, so it just made sense to try and work with what I had. Most people will work with what they have. Um, now guys, we're gonna talk about Scarlet and Violet. We're gonna talk about the console market. We're gonna do a mystery mail day. I am kind of behind on doing my videos, but I just wanted to really do an update video and tell you guys what I've been wasting all my time doing recently um, so that it doesn't go in vain, so that you guys know why I haven't been making a video recently. Um, anyways, I get back home with the CR1616, the right battery fit um, for the cartridge that is the yellow cartridge. It uses the same small battery, and honestly, most Game Boy games use the 1616. It's really primarily the Pokemon games that use the 2025, which I think is why they've lasted 10, 15 years, and some of them are still saving with the original battery. Now, whether I've ruined the value of this by putting a new battery in and messing with it um, versus just keeping the original battery and it not saving, that's up for debate. I really do feel like once you take the original hardware out, even if it's just a battery, you are changing the value of that item. When you're soldering, when you're putting heat on, when you're modifying, when you're doing any of that, I do think you're changing the value. So in hindsight, looking back, I really feel like in some ways, I should have just kept the game that wouldn't save properly and kept it in this box, but I fixed it. It saves now, it plays now, and it'll be good to play for the next 15 years. I saved it last night. It's It pulled up again this morning, so I was really, really happy because prior to that, all I could do was soft reset saves, which means I turn it off, turn it back on immediately, and my save is still there. But if I turn it off, wait 10 seconds, save was gone. Anyways... So I got my new battery from Batteries Plus. I came back home. Now it's about three o'clock, four o'clock. I try to put the new battery in using the old tabs. They bust off, they break. Now I'm really frustrated because now the tabs I was gonna reuse are broken because I've bent them back and forth. When you're bending metal, you are going to break it from bending it back and forth and back and forth. Anyways, now I rush out the door, I run to Home Depot. I call my dad because my dad has a soldering iron, but his was much too bulky and honestly wouldn't have worked for this application. So I asked my neighbors, they don't have any extra solder. So I just think, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna go to Home Depot, I'm gonna buy one. I race to Home Depot, 30 minutes goes by. Get to Home Depot, I don't have my wallet. Frustrated as all get out, I scream in my car. Then I race back home, get my wallet and we make a family trip. We take the dog, the kiddo, the wife, we all go to Home Depot, we make it a family thing. My wife gave me some moral support because I was on the edge of breaking down because this damn Pokemon game was breaking me. Honestly, if you wanna practice doing this, practice it on some games you don't care about first before you go ahead and work on a vintage classic like that. Anyways, moving forward, I get the soldering kit, we get out of Home Depot, I get back home, I get back to it. It's about 5.30, 6 o'clock now, my parents come over, we're having dinner. Okay, fast forward, four hours goes by. I've been messing with soldering, putting, putting the tab that I broke back on here. So what I'm saying is I broke this piece off and had to re-solder it um, and reflow these soldering points right here. Um, after I did that, the battery slipped in perfectly, but it still was coming up with a gargled Nintendo message and it would not get me to the start screen. So now I'm really frustrated. At this point, I've thought that I've fried the board. Guys, whenever you solder, take note, if you put that game back together and you put it back in your Game Boy and it's hot still, it is not going to boot up. It just won't. Not in my case, at least. This is just my experience. I'm just being transparent with you guys. Now, I let it cool down. I wiped some isopropyl on the contacts and um, after it was about 11 o'clock, maybe 12 o'clock, we, we, my wife successfully got rid of two, not got rid of, rehomed 
So my wife has a dog rescue <clears throat> that I'm not sure if she's going to continue or not, but she successfully rehomed two of the puppies that we had here. So now we only have one foster dog here and then our, our family dogs. So I'm really happy about that because as much as they're barking and yapping in the background, it used to be really bad with five, six dogs here. There was constant noise going on. So like, I don't even mind our house dogs because honestly, they're just little yappers. But anyways, that was just a little update. So successfully, there are less dogs in the house now. I'm really happy about that because now the videos are a little bit more quiet. Um, anyways, I get the new battery in. Um, over and over and over, I, t I re-solder the points. I tried moving the, so the, I tried moving these contacts further and further apart because the battery just wasn't quite fitting right. Um, and then I put a piece of tin foil cut out to the same size of the battery right behind the battery to help with conductivity. And that seemed to make a huge difference. Once I put that aluminum foil behind there and I put a piece of electric tape holding it down nice after that, by the time my parents were ready to leave pretty much and the entire day was gone, my game was saving. Now at this point, I was absolutely obliterated mentally, physically, emotionally. I was like so invested in getting this damn game to boot up and save. Um, and as you guys imagine, as you guys can imagine, after it saved, I played the heck out of it. So now I have an hour and a half logged on this game that it saved from last night. But now I have all of the new batteries coming on the way that already have contact points um, soldered onto them. So they come, the batteries that I have on the way come with these contacts that I can just solder directly to the board. Now, now that I'm soldering, there is literally no point to try and tape this thing on. Um, so now I'm feeling kind of stupid because I'm gonna end up undoing my work anyways. But for now, I'm just going to leave this here the way it is because it works and it runs properly and it's, it'll be good for the next 10, 15 years. There's really no point for me to go back into it. I will save all those extra batteries that I've ordered for the next project. For now, I have a first print Pokemon Yellow and this is what I spent all day yesterday doing. Anyways, that was my sob story for that. But it taught me a lot and honestly, I think if you guys want to buy older games and buy them, you know, not functioning or not with a new save battery, that's a great way to save a lot of money. You can find these games for $20, $15 if the save doesn't work or if something doesn't work. People usually just kind of chuck them, they get rid of them. So it's a great way to find these, these Game Boy games for a deal. Um, so I have been working on that. Additionally, um, I've been cleaning my consoles, so I just basically spent the last couple days doing another hobby, basically cleaning out these consoles and getting them ready. But I am really happy to say that I learned a lot in the process. Um, I learned about uh, reflowing the um, SRAM, which is right, well, actually, no, yeah, it's this one right here. Reflowing the SRAM right here. So basically, I just took these solder while it was hot and I put it on each of these pins and kind of shine them up. As you guys can see, these pins, they're kind of dull. They're not really shiny like it is down here. Um, a big reason for that is because this solder job was done, you know, 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago. And these are just dulled over time. One thing that I swear helped with my game running properly was because I reheated and reflowed um, these solder points. Now, I don't have any flux. Flux is a, um, a chemical, a compound that you basically use that helps the solder stay put and adhered better, um, adhere better, whatever. I'm not an expert on this. I'm just getting into this whole kind of market, this whole world. Uh, but it's very interesting to me. And it's very fulfilling when you get these Game Boys to work. And honestly, there's just a point where it was like, this isn't going to work. I'm screwed. And I was so frustrated and about to break down. And most of the time, as long as the contact points um, at the bottom, as long as these contact points are good, your game probably will still run. You just probably need a new battery. That's that's. 90% of the time, that is people's issues. Um, usually it's not the hardware or the software going bad. I think that that's really uncommon. And honestly, I just think there's so many success stories that, you know, the ones that get highlighted, the stories that we see the most are the stories where people just completely fail or have an issue or lose their game entirely. Um, I would say that 
I was so close to giving up on this process. And if I had given up, it would just be sitting in my display case with a game that doesn't play, doesn't save, and I would have been super depressed about it. So it feels really fulfilling um, to finish that process and get it to where everything runs properly again. And I just really wanted to share that with you guys and let you know like what I've been up to. Um, so anyways, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys can appreciate this. Um, I just, I had so much fun doing it again. If you, if this is a task you want to take of your own, honestly, all you need is a kit like this off Amazon for super cheap. Get yourself some electric tape. That's what worked for me. You don't need to solder any of this stuff, but I ended up buying solder equipment as well and soldering because I had to, because I broke the tabs off. So it's weird because the universe kind of forced me to learn how to do this the right way. So now I know how to do it. Now I'm very eager on the next games to fix them properly. I am, um, I am saving and playing through both my gold and my yellow as they are taped up. Um, and honestly, the, the tape works great. As long as you bend the tabs properly, they'll actually seat that battery really nicely and flush. And the battery won't even move without the tape. Um, the tape is really just to keep everything in place um, and for extra reassurance that as it's moving around, it won't bump around or anything. My daughter actually, I had this because I was playing it in my bed last night. My daughter actually dropped this cartridge on the ground this morning. Mind you, the battery is not soldered in. The battery is just between two tabs with a piece of tape on it. And still, the game saves, the game plays. So it's good for the wear. And also, I have an opinion now that... Um, it takes time for these games when you put a new battery in, when you're soldering stuff, when you're heating up the board. It takes time for it to kind of re-initialize and get ready to accept that new battery again. So in some ways, I wish I would have just come, I wish I would have just stopped midday, enjoyed the rest of my day and come back to it and it probably would have functioned properly. But the thing is, I'm super OCD and I'm a completionist. I had to get it done. I couldn't stop thinking about it. It bugged me until I got it finished. And I just really wanted to vent and share that with you guys that this stuff is not exactly easy. It's sure as heck not rocket science, but it's also not super easy um, to the untrained eye or, or person that's opening this stuff up. It looks a little complicated. It looks like, yo, if I, if I take this battery out and take a razor blade to it, it's just gonna, everything's going to mess up. And you need to be careful of that because if you are going to reuse these tabs, you need to just very, very carefully, you need to very, very carefully go back and forth underneath these tabs, trying to free them loose. I really, really, if you want to reuse those tabs, don't bother using a flathead screwdriver or like, or like a knife like this. Don't use a knife like this and like pry it open. Cause you're going to end up screwing up those tabs. Um, for good. And then you're going to have to solder. You're going to have to get a soldering iron to take those tabs off and put new ones on. I think I got very lucky though. The fact that I broke my metal tabs and I actually was able to solder the metal tab back on. I feel pretty proud about that. I made use of something that was broken and mangled. Um, also quick tip. I used a nail file to file down the, um, so as you guys can see right here, there's these two dots, right? One, two, so those two dots right here are indicative of the point where the factory had the point solder kind of point solder those points on like really, really light. Because as you guys know, if you solder a battery or put heat near a battery, you're seriously risking a lot. I know there's people who've said they've done it. I'm kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum. I think it's, it's really not worth the disaster you might have trying to solder anything onto a battery. It definitely crossed my mind. Like maybe I should solder directly onto the battery to get it to fully connect but it just wasn't worth the damage to me if, if something did go wrong if it exploded went through my glasses maybe i lost an eye like that's a bit extreme but i just want everybody to be safe doing this and if you're doing this try and do it outside because the fumes of the solder it's all very it's very interesting and i think anybody can do it and this also applies to consoles because you can mod consoles way more easily if you know how to solder because you can solder wires knowing what i know now i would not have purchased a modded console now little sneak peek i guess i gave a little bit of a um what do you call that a um 
I guess I leaked a little bit of information for the next Mystery Mail Day, but I did order a modded Game Boy to kind of get a feel for what it was like and how it looked and see if I liked these modded Game Boys or if I really just preferred um, to have the original. The reason I didn't mod my own is because I would have ended up really frustrated and I would have had to take all that time to do that. And in the end, if I don't like the finished product, was it even worth all the time I put into it? No, it wasn't. So just stick with OEM. I think... I think when I review this modded console in one of my, my mail days coming up, I'm going to have the same attitude of you're just better off buying OEM, replacing a screen, cleaning it up really nicely. You're better doing that than buying off of like AliExpress or like eBay or like any Chinese company making garbage shells. It's just not worth it. And I think I'm going to have that opinion, but I'm still excited to see it, review it, and see what see what we get for $200 for a modded console. Anyways, guys, um, I also lost some listings on aluminum modded consoles. Those, I think, are worth it because they have a really good aluminum hard cast body shell. And I think that alone is really, really nice because if you drop it, it's not going to crack. It's not going to break. It might get a scratch. But I think that's pretty cool. So I lost a bit on that. I'm pretty bummed out about that. But whatever. All good. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and keep a lookout for more. Peace out.